the University of Michigan, they did a study and compiled a list of different popular foods that could increase or decrease life expectancy. So earlier last hour, we talked about how hot dogs take 36 minutes off of your life if you were to eat just a single one. Right. And there's many, many different things like that. So double cheeseburger, pizza, bacon, cheddar, soft drink, Mm. those all make the minutes lost list. Mm -hmm. But there are some minutes gained foods, like peanut butter and jam sandwich, which is 33 minutes gained. Surprising. And and then baked salmon, banana, tomatoes, avocado, and then French fries is at the bottom of the list with one and a half minutes gained. Adding to your life. I just, that's hard to believe. A lot of different interesting questions. And so we have Dr. Farah, cardiologist and CEO at Bentley Heart, director of Global Healthline Foundations, here to answer some of those questions and to talk about this study. First off, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. You are calling from Texas, which is a different time zone, but we're very thankful that you're able to join us today and talk a little bit about this study. Can you first explain how these foods either gain or lose minutes? Especially French fries. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Why don't we start with the unhealthy food? Um, You know, it's uh, pretty well known that hot dog, cheeseburger, bacon, these things are known to be unhealthy. And yes, they do take away from life just because, um, you know, I'm going to focus on cardiovascular disease. A cheeseburger, pizza, and hot dog are probably the three killers of America because, you know, they have lots of unhealthy things in there, saturated fat. They're very high on saturated fat and high cholesterol that can build plaque in your heart and cardiovascular system and increase your risk of having a heart attack or a stroke. And that's how they can reduce your life expectancy, but not just that they increase other risk factors that can lead to cardiovascular disease like hypertension, high cholesterol, and diabetes. Um, On the other hand, you know, the study did put out some uh, good foods that they're calling good foods that add time to life. I, however, would have to disagree with some of them. And as you mentioned, French fries, uh, French fries, I do not believe add any amount of life to your life. I, I think that's not correct, oh, unfortunately. Come on. I know, I know. This was this was not something that we can agree on from from the medical community, from medical science. We know French fries is one of the more dangerous types of food, especially in the cardiology field um i will give you one example french fries are packed with um you know carb their type of carb it's potatoes so it's not good for our diabetic patients it also has a lot of sodium the salt in it is not good for anyone with high blood pressure or any kind of heart disease especially those who have heart failure you know congestive heart failure is a very common condition here in america and a lot of people end up in the hospital after having French fries just because of that sodium content. And they can go into heart failure, and we deal with that a lot. And that actually decreases life expectancy, not increases. I just want to make that very clear to our listeners that just because the study says it doesn't mean we can take it to heart and just say, all right, French fries is a healthy food now. No, it is not. <laughs> That's a really good thing you point out. Yeah, and we might want to point out, too, the University of Michigan is the one that compiled this list of popular foods that increase or decrease life expectancy, Kylan. With it being state fair season, and we just got through all of our summer cookouts and everything, (laughs) so most of these foods that are on the minutes lost are popular foods, especially during this time of year. How can we reduce these minute lost results? Is it helpful? Does it I guess, does it even out with eating a peanut butter and jam sandwich right after eating a hot dog? Balance. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That sounds like such a scary combo as a cardiologist. (laughs) Somebody (laughs) eating a bunch of french fries and then then go, all right, now I'm going to have my peanut butter and jam sandwich. Actually, peanut butter and jam sandwich is not a healthy choice for, um, even though it made it to the top of the list, it's, it's not something I would recommend for many reasons. Yes, peanut butter is a source of protein. I'll give you that. But is it the healthiest source of protein? Probably not. It's also something that's pretty high in saturated fat. So for somebody with, you know, risk factors and uh, cardiovascular disease, this is not a good good option. Same thing with the jam. You know, the jam is packed with sugar. So somebody with diabetes, this will really increase their blood glucose level. And obviously, this is not a good choice for them. Um, so I, I would have to disagree that peanut butter and jam sandwich, sandwich should be 
on the healthy side and the fact that it made it to the top of the list, that is not good. Oh, man. I believe I'm going at the study now. Oh, yeah. Here's the study. Right. We're ripping up another study. And that's so sad that there are some different uh, disagreements with this study. What foods do you recommend for us to eat to try and help balance out our diet that we eat? It gives me a, an extra 30 minutes of life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will give you some simple choices. And there are some that are on the positive side of things that I do agree with. For example, baked salmon. I think that's a very healthy option for protein. Um, Banana is a great option, but, you know, again, those diabetic patients, they do have to watch out because it does have the sugar. But banana, uh, uh, you know, obviously it's a a very good option. Uh, Tomatoes, avocado, all of those are great options from the study that made it to the positive side of things. Uh, For my patients, what I recommend is the Mediterranean diet. It's a great, healthy diet, balanced diet that's not a crash diet and it's known to be heart healthy. It can prevent a lot of things, including heart disease. It's great for weight loss. Um, So what we promote really is moderation. Plant-based diet is the recommendation right now by uh, the new um, AHA heart healthy guidelines, uh, healthy food guidelines. It's not to say that we're asking everybody to be a vegetarian, but plant-based proteins and things, we should move more towards those. Um, it's unrealistic for us to expect that no one's going to have a cheeseburger or a steak or a pizza. So that's how we say moderation. You can just make sure it's not as frequently. With all of our different diets that we've already had leading up to this point, both hearing and having this conversation with you, do you have any other recommendations of lifestyle choices that we should try to, I guess, move towards to make our our lifestyle a little bit better? Absolutely. You know, heart disease is the number one killer for both men and women in America, and 80% of it is preventable. So we can increase life by two very simple things. One is eating healthy. We have to remember that food is medicine. And number two is activity, exercise. If we can do make some positive changes in these two aspects of our lives, we can really make a difference in how much time we add to life. The other two things I will say are smoking and alcohol consumption. Uh, If we can stop smoking or not smoke, um, that's a great, great way of uh, increasing life expectancy and quality of life. Same thing with alcohol consumption. Reducing alcohol intake makes a big difference. Wow. And you've made a difference for us just being able to have this conversation. Again, Dr. Farah, cardiologist and CEO at Bentley Heart and the director of Global Healthline Foundations. Thank you so much for taking time to join us and share all this news about food with us. Very welcome. Glad to be here.